Hello, gentle listeners, and welcome back to another episode of We Read It One Night, the romance podcast where two sisters talk about a YA fantasy romance series that imprinted on us hard, along with, you know, regular romance novels. Last year, we deep dove into the Twilight Saga, and this year, we're hopping into this generation's fantasy romance darling, A Court of Thorns and Roses by Sarah J. Moss. That's right, we're switching gears from vampires to that fairy porn you've been hearing so much about on the internet. Join us as we follow Fairy, I mean Feyre, as she dives into the dangerous fairy world and develops a boner for this blonde guy named Tampon, I mean Tamlin. It's part one of our Akatar Universe Marathon. Don't forget to check out our new bookish feminist Etsy store while you listen and leave us a rating and review. Enjoy the show! All right, wait, so um, first of all, hi, listener. Happy Valentine's Day. Woohoo! Hmm. This is coming out on Valentine's Day. Wow. It's also, more importantly, the day of my conception, me, Allison, because my <laughs> birthday is November 14th, which is nine months after Valentine's Day. So happy conception day to me. That's the real holiday. Uh, <laughs> as an early conception day present, Taylor Swift gave us some Gaylor content um, <laughs> because she had a party or something after the Grammys or something. And Haley Kyoko was there. And Taylor Swift took a picture with Haley Kyoko and her girlfriend, and it was very gay. And I was like, this is like, I, Taylor, if you want to convince people you're straight, this is not the way to do it. It's just, so we got some great Gaylor content. No, I know. Today we're starting another time on our tradition here at Rewet a Night where we take a YA romance fantasy series that imprinted on us pretty hard. And we talk about it for a year. We're, this year we're doing Akatar, otherwise known as A Court of Thorns and Roses by Sarah J. Mass. Moss. I don't know. She has two A's in her last name and it's very confusing. It's not that confusing. Everyone says Moss. Is it Moss? Okay. It's not Mass. In my head, mm-hmm. I say Mass. I don't know. I don't no, know that I've, I don't, I don't know that I've ever heard anyone say it. <laughs> On TikTok? I feel like people always say Moss. Mass, but mass also sounded right when you said it. I don't know. Listen, Any- anyway, yeah, she's she's the actor series. Sarah J. Mass is a big girly on TikTok, and this is her fairy book, um, specifically fairies, F A E, uh, as opposed to fairies, F A I. It's not really standardized anywhere, which I think I love that tweet that's like. I, I really admire the fantasy genre's commitment to never, <laughs> never like yeah. standardizing the spelling okay. of fairy. Um, but Sarah, Sarah J. Maas, with this book, with with Akatar, added her own variation to the spelling because her main character is named Feyre. Okay, Feyre is our nineteen year old nineteen <laughs> yeah, year old gal, so funny. and yeah. it's and it's spelled F E Y R E, and. I only know it was Feyre because I listened to this on the audiobook when I read it for the first time. But every time I saw the name, because I'd seen people talking about this book and talking about Feyre, every time I saw it written down, I was like, the character's name is Feyre? <laughs> I know. Literally. I, like, I know. I remember she you named saying her that. Fairy. <laughs> I know. She, and she's not even a fairy. She's a human. I remember that's how you pictured to me. You were like, I have this book you should read. It's about a girl named Feyre and fairies, but Feyre is not the fairy. <laughs> like, right, 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 right. That yeah, makes sure. Okay. Sense. <laughs> that somehow makes sense. I was like, sense. Sarah, like, did you just, like, was Feyre, like, a filler thing? And then, like, she, like, finished writing it and, and like, sent it off to her editor and just forgot to, like, change the name. <laughs> I know. I mean, like, yeah, like. Like what's the name? Freya? It's probably just, it's just a play on Freya. I feel like which is no. Like, it's know. definitely that's that's always what she does. Is she takes all of her names and she takes them from like Gaelic and Welsh and like Very that kind of like George R. R. Martin kind of thing. Well, not really, not quite. Hers aren't quite as much like just a twist on. But Freya yeah. is moving up in the charts. Feyre, 
No, Freya. Oh, Freya. Yeah, hasn't Where's Feyre? <laughs> I guarantee you there are Feyre babies out there. Hasn't, I guarantee Freya it. Freya hasn't quite cracked the top 100, but uh, Feyre. It's a user submitted name behind the name, so there's no popularity charts on it. It's <laughs> rude. I know. They're definitely. I honestly they're feel definitely. like Nesta has more potential. I wonder if Elaine has seen a surge in popularity, although probably not spelled the same way. But. I think Elaine was already on the no, up and up. Not really. That's like there's like a little little increase, but not really. I don't know. We'll see. It remains to be seen. I don't know. Elaine's it is trending up, them. but like not really. Elaine is my middle name. What's wrong with Elaine? Um, oh, you're saying not, she's the worst of the sisters. No, I'm saying the Absolutely sisters. <laughs> I'm not yeah, saying the name. She is. Absolutely. Okay. Let's back up. So Feyre is the youngest of three sisters. This is this is kind of like a, a loose Beauty and the Beast retelling. Oh, I would say I was like, as I was reading, I was like, this isn't even that loose. Like, okay, fair. Like enough. Sarah J. Mass really commits to like the big scenes from like mm-hmm. the Disney movie and like the traditional fairy tale. Like, she commits really to hard. It. It's definitely not. What do you mean the Disney movie? Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. The like, well, that could be from the fairy tale. I don't. I would not. Yeah, be no, no. But I was traditional that, one, so she has the what. No, I was just going to say, so beca- because of her um, commitment to the to the Beauty and the Beast retelling for this specific book, like she just she really abandons the fairy tale retellings like in the rest of the series. Mm-hmm. Um, and I I pretty much disregard the characterization of Feyre's sisters in this book because like I'm like she was just making like stereotypical cardboard cut out evil like sisters to like show that Feyre was not like other girls. I was like, I don't, they don't count because oh, their sisters I, become listen. like bigger characters later. I don't even know. They're just like so shit. It's not even that they're not like other girls. They're just like shitty. Oh, according to behind the name, Feyre is based on F-A-Y-R-E, the old fashioned spelling of the English word fair, meaning fair, beautiful, which makes sense because it's like Belle. You know? Oh, wow. Checks out. You know, that's a deep cut, Sarah. Good for, good on you. Like that was, mm-hmm. that was nice. Good job. Mm-hmm. I think though, I think also, I just want to say that, um, I don't know what you think, but I think that we should try – like we, listener, we've obviously – we've read like all of the books that have been released in this series. But I think that we should like – when we talk about it, we should like not like do like spoilers for like future books. Oh, I agree. Books. Yeah. Yeah, I agree. I agree. Okay. So Feyre is the youngest of three sisters. Um, Nesta is the oldest and then Elaine. And they used to be rich. Like they used to be not peasants. But then, you know, for <laughs> their original fairy tale – the dad, like, you know, to satisfy his creditors, he tried to do this risky mission with his ships because he's a merchant and that, you know, fucked. Like, the ship sank. They're fucked now. They're poor. The mom's dead, of course. Obviously. But but on her deathbed, the mom made Feyre oh promise my God. Yeah. to take so care like, of her even family. Though, well, let me say, even though Feyre is the youngest, the mom was like, Feyre, you're the one who has to promise to take care of your family. Like, keep them together. There is the youngest, and her mom never taught her to learn. Never taught her how to read. Um, that's important. That is a critical. <laughs> or right, Feyre cannot read, even though she was eleven when they lost their fortune. So like, right or right. Well, she. she I write. think it was that she had like her. Yeah, her mom. She specifically is like my mom. Like never hired a governess or like standardized her sure, education. Sure, sure, so sure. like Nesta and Elaine went to school, but yeah. And her mom made a promise that Feyre takes her promises really seriously, even though she, ha- you know, she's oh, not like goody two shoes. Like she has, she she's know, one of those. She plays she's Edward and Bella. With morals, yeah, she plays fast and <laughs> loose with the morals in most other respects, which I like, I love for her. But and that one thing, she's like, I have to keep my promise, even though they don't get two shits about me. The dad like doesn't take care of them because he had his will broken by his creditors who broke his leg. He can't really walk. Nesta and Elaine are pieces of shit in this yes. book. Elaine. Like, and Elaine gets this treatment where they're like, well, you know, we can't hold it against her that she doesn't help. You know, she's just too beautiful. It would just never occur to her to help. And I'm like, is that really better than someone who, like, consciously makes the choice? Like, we get the quote. It wasn't like Elaine was cruel. And I was like, yeah, but arguably she's worse. Because mm-hmm. it – so Nesta is, like, an open bitch. She's just a raging bitch. She's horrible. I love Nesta. Nesta is my favorite character in this whole series. But – which we'll talk about <laughs> in later books. But at least Nesta is like completely 100% honest about who she is. Like she's not trying to like hide anything. Elaine is like, everyone's like, no, she's so beautiful and kind. But like this bitch, her family is starving and this bitch chooses to grow flowers instead of vegetables. No. Like what? Elaine. 
the only one out here. She's the youngest, and she has to start like hunting in the woods at age fourteen, like alone. And they won't, and then like they they won't even like help her like chop wood or like whatever. Yeah, like literally, they'd be starving. No, and the thing about the thing actually that bugged me the most about Nesta, I think I I, I think like you know throughout the whole series, but especially like now, is is not even like that she just won't help or that she's a bitch. It's it's a favoritism. It it all goes back yeah. to Elaine. Like she only cares about Elaine. She'll like go to bat for Elaine, even though Elaine's a piece of shit, and Fair is the one keeping them fed. Fair is the youngest. Like I guess that's what gets to me. No, like if Fair had been the oldest, like somehow it would have been. I don't know. Listen, but the know. real villain here is their dad and capitalism. But like, I, I feel like the dad does not get enough flack. Like at the end of the day, they were all children when they like became destitute <laughs> and the dad didn't do shit. I guess it's like, yeah, I mean, you're right. Objectively, I guess it's more like the attitudes that like really bugged me. Like, I don't yeah, know. No, they, they're the worst. Like, if they were all just like depressed, like the dad and like just like couldn't even, you know, and I, yeah, I don't know. Listen. It's all weaponized incompetence. Like all like. All of it's them. not even what I guess it I guess she does like try it, but it's more just like wow you smell bad and you can't read even though you're keeping us fed you're covered in mud <laughs> <laughs> anyway. can I just say that I love the fact that um so Sarah J Maas's first series was the Throne of the Grass series and like the define one of the defining characteristics of the heroine in that is that she loves to read like she's like obsessed with books mm-hmm. so I, I love that Sarah J Maas was like I'm gonna be so different I'm like no one's I gonna know, claim that I write like in other. heroine she can't read <laughs> It's not, not even like that they're aliens. Yeah. Just can't. <laughs> oh my God. Yeah, no. Oh my God. Yeah. Um, okay, so we start off with her. I think it also think it's funny that Thera oh Thera at one point is like, perhaps it was merciful that our mother died. Yeah, There's more I food for us. Too. I was like, that is stone cold. <laughs> um, yeah, okay. So so Farah's in the woods, she's hunting when she sees the steer and then like a wolf stalking it. The wolf is, quote, the size of a pony. And I was like, Jacob Black? Jacob Black, is that you? <laughs> a giant wolf? And a yeah. giant intelligent wolf in the woods? <laughs> yeah. Um, and she wants to obviously kill the wolf to, like, slurp it up. But also she has the thought, she's like, it could be a fairy. Because what we find out is that her family, Thera, lives really close to the wall between the fairy world and the human world. And basically everyone hates the fairies because the fairies used to keep the humans as slaves like hundreds of years ago. And like they justifiably was- hate the hate the fairies. Well, like absolutely. It's very- yeah. I- absolutely. <laughs> yeah, like honestly, I don't yeah. Like she says multiple times, she's like, I don't understand why my particular ancestors, like or why the people who live here didn't choose to go farther away. Cause like they're on yeah. like a little like peninsula or something that's the closest. And they could have like sailed across the sea to like get to where all the Yeah, they're are. on like a little island. And like there's fairies on the other on like the continents. Like they're it- there, it's not just their island that has fairies, but like their island's the only one that's like split up. The humans fought a war to like be free, and some of the fairies did help them. There oh, were sure. like abolitionist fairies. <laughs> so she sees the wolf and she's like, "I could kill it." She's like, "It could be a fairy. It could just not be a wolf." But she's like, "Well, fuck it. If it's a fairy, like even better." And she has this like special arrow of like a special type of wood. What kind is it again? Ash or something? Ash, ash, wood. ash arrow that kills fairies, like according to their legends. But they have like a bunch of legends about fairies, like that they can't lie, like iron, yeah. Well, it's all like the traditional like fairy, sure, like sure. in like so, our mythology. She kills the wolf, and like the wolf just like looks at her the whole time. Has a sl- very slow, painful death. <laughs> like, mm-hmm. She's like, I literally watched mm-hmm. like the light leave this wolf. She shoots it through its eye. Yeah. And then she skins the pelt and, like, she can't even take – that's what gets me. She can't even take both the wolf and the deer. She doesn't try to go backboard or anything either, which is, like, bold. Oh, part of the reason she kills the wolf is also because she's like, "Um, well, I can't shoot the deer deer. because then the wolf is definitely going to fight me for the deer. (laughs) Right, right, right. Yeah. But it's mostly because she's like, well, it's a fairy. Like, that's good. And that's important. Yeah. So then she takes it home and that's when we find out how shitty the sisters and dad are. But at least they're, like, excited about the pelt. Yeah, She's going to get a lot of money for it. But Nesta yeah. and Elaine have the audacity to be like, I need a new pair of boots. Like, Nesta's I like, I need a pair. I need a new cloak. And Feyre is like, um, I'm hunting in the woods every day. And, like, my toes are poking out of my boots. <laughs> I was like, I what is this? It's implied that they regularly just, like, take the money, the extra money that she gets. And I was like, why? Feyre, like, you should, like, hide this in a tree that they can't climb or something. Yeah, or, like, like, it, like, in your – yeah, I don't understand. Like, Jesus. I guess I just can't imagine – like, I don't know. Maybe it'd be, it'd be different, like, living day to day. But I'm like, I just don't understand how you can – I don't know. Listen. They're the out financial here. irresponsibility. 
I'm just like, I don't understand. It's, it's less the financial. Like, I understand wanting nice things. It's more just like the fuck you to like the person who got it for you. Like, you're again, your younger sister. Yeah. Who can't even read. <laughs> it's out here risking her life. What up? I'm Farah. I'm 19 and I never fucking learned how to read. <laughs> exactly. No, wait, that's, listen, that sums it up. That's, and at least the dad is like, where'd you get this? He's like, it's too dangerous. Like, at least he recognizes, but like, and at not least that the he dad has the excuse it. of like being disabled. Like, he can barely walk. Sure, so, like, sure. sure. But like, I just, I don't, I, again, like, I think I could forgive it more if, like, even if they still weren't helping her hunt, right? Even if they still, like, it's just the attitude of like, wow, you still suck. Yeah. We hate you. But give you us smelly. Money. Why do you yeah. smell like blood as she comes home covered in like deer carcass and right. wolf? Like that they're going to be eating. And then like she has to stop them from like eating too much that they have leftovers. Like I just can't. Yeah. That's like, oh, again, like yeah. I, yeah, like they don't all have to be out there. Like, I mean, obviously that's still shitty if you're not going to like even try to help. But like, whatever. Yeah. They are also likes to paint, by the way. Like that's her that's her personality trait. Not reading because sure. she that's can't what read. She, she like her in her dream world, like her her wildest dreams are to get her sisters married off to not shitty people for some reason. And then like <laughs> just have her and her dad to support and like be able to paint. That she they have this like dresser that she painted for each of them and she put like flowers on Elaine's and like fire on Nesta's and on hers, she put a night sky. She filed that. So away. remember that. Later. Yeah. Um, and Sarah J. Mass doesn't know how to describe painting um in any other way other than color and light and shape. Like that it's some variation of those. Yeah, that's what I'm light. saying. It's giving lips and teeth and tongue. Like it's yeah, she just does not. There is always like she sees something and she's like, Oh, the colors and the lights and the shapes are so beautiful. <laughs> I was like, Sarah, <laughs> you couldn't even use Absolutely. synonyms. <laughs> No, I mean, listen, keep it simple. Keep it safe. So the next day, they go down to the town to try to sell the pellet and, like, get some money. And they run into these, like, the children of the blessed, which are, like, humans who are, like, fairy syncophants. They're fairy Mormons. They're, like, like, excuse me, do you have time to hear about the, like, word of fairies today? You, too, would go across the the wall and live in peace and happiness. And every literally everyone hates them. And this is, like, the one time we see Farrah and her sisters united with – and, like, also the other villagers. They're all, like, you're fucking stupid. You're going to get eaten. Fuck you. And then, like, they have to, like, like – yeah. Like, Nessa's, like, literally ready to fight. Yeah. Oh, my God. I love it. <laughs> um, and Fair is also, like – oh, and Nessa, like, shows the, like, the the Iron fairy Mormon, wear, like, yeah. her, like, bracelet. And she's like, oh, how dare you wear that, like, around your wrist. Yeah. But um, I – they are, like, fairy, fairy attacks have increased in the last 50 years. And, listener, that's called foreshadowing. <laughs> Which is, like, interesting that they even have, like, the historical record of that. Like, the last 50 years. I don't know. It's interesting. Um, Other people can read and write. <laughs> I guess. But, like, I don't know. It seems like it's just, like, rumors and stuff. And, like, that doesn't seem like the kind of thing that lasts for 50 years, when you know, in the human realm. I don't know. Whatever. Yeah, I guess. Um, so, they, she runs – so, Thera talks to this, like, assassin lady – Who's like really? It's really this whole like weird town scene is really just giving like NPC video game interaction vibes. One hundred percent. None of this is really necessary. We don't really learn that much. It's all just we do. We do learn that Bear is not a virgin, which I like. She has like a fuck buddy in the town. I I will say so. Yeah, Bear talks to like a mercenary. That's it. Really doesn't come back later. But I was wondering like. I was like, why doesn't the mercenary mercenary like come back later in the book or even later in the series? And then I remembered I'm reading the Throne of Glass series right now. And there's a lot of characters that Sarah J. Maas like introduced in like the prequel novellas that don't come mm-hmm. back until like book like five, six or mm-hmm. seven. You know, they don't come back mm-hmm. until way later. So I wonder yeah. whether the mercenary is just going to like make an appearance in yeah. like <laughs> the next book. Maybe. I mean, her defining characteristic is like these. she was attacked by a fairy and she has these like scars, like dark scars, veiny scars. I'm picturing like really intense varicose veins all of her yeah, legs. Yeah, so that's what I was That's picturing. how we identify her. And she like gives Farrah a really good deal. She's like, she's, yeah, she even has like a backstory. She's, and Farrah's like, why are you doing this? Like, why, like, this is not a fair trade. And the, the mercenary's like, well, someone helped me and mine at a time we really needed it. And I figured it was about time to return the favor. Yeah. So like, yeah. Like, When's that the a, mercenary? Right. I want her backstory. Right. <laughs> When's right. she coming back? Maybe her and Elaine are going to get together or something. Listen. No, <laughs> she's too good for Elaine. <laughs> Yeah. We also anyway. learned about like the mortal queens that it took to make the treaty, which like unclear why it would take. I just – the biggest thing about this whole – okay, so the fairies in this book live like literally thousands of years. 
and the humans are normal. They're basically humans. immortal. Like I don't think they have basically like a life, like a living yeah. memory of but, a like, lifespan for fairies. Sure, sure. But like, what really? It's just like the humans only live like a hundred. You know, not even hundred. Like normal human lives. So just the idea that like. I don't even know why that like the idea that the humans would be taken seriously in any capacity like it just doesn't make sense. It just doesn't not that like the humans should be slaves, but like it just doesn't even make sense that there'd be like any any possibility of equality. Like it just doesn't make any sense that they'd even Do you get what I'm saying? Yeah. Like it's like our, and I guess they're intelligent, so it's not quite like us and a cicada. But like it's kind of like that. <laughs> <laughs> like, right? Are you even out here making a treaty? Why would it ever take a cicada? And I get, I get it. Like me, let's say I, I want to step up for cicada rights, and I'm like, there's no <laughs> treaty, no more cicada squishing. But like, in what world would it take six of the cicadas to get together and be at all a part of it in any way, shape, or form? <laughs> it just does not. It just does not compute, right? Like, and that's what really. That's like the biggest suspension. Just I don't know. Just like something about it. I mean, you have book. to do that anytime. There's a. There's a. The situation in which there's like a mythical like being interacting with you like even lord of the rings like why the fuck do the elves take the human seriously yeah i know you know what i mean yeah. the elves are immortal yeah they do because like your reader is a human and you need someone to relate to yeah i guess listen but like the fairies are basically humans like i don't know whatever so then okay so then oh. they get lots of money what yeah, sorry. No, just in this scene, like when Feyre is talking with the mercenary, she like looks over at her sisters and she's like, wow, their skin is, quote, so infinitely delicate and shreddable. I know. <laughs> like, just like, listen. Oh my God. is just really in her head, like totally stone cold about her whole family. She was like, good thing my mom died because she wouldn't be able to handle being poor. Nesta and Elaine are infinitely shreddable. Well, no, she, but she's also like not stone cold at all. Like she's, it's out of concern for them. And I just don't yeah. understand. Like, I mean, I get no, it. I, it's I, out I, of I commitment it. to her promise. That's what it right, is. Right. But also like she definitely does still care. I mean, I guess it's I, – yeah, I guess she's just like a little traumatized baby. Like, Thayer is like a really good person in a lot of ways. And I was just like – I think that's why I relate to Nesta because I'm like, Thayer, you're too good. <laughs> You're too yeah, nice. But, <laughs> You're too yeah. forgiving. I guess like if you were in her position, yeah, I don't know. Yeah, I guess like it's like easy to like look from the outside and be like, this is a toxic situation. But like if that's how you're right. literally lived your whole life or like not. Also, even, it's you know, like what the it. the options are like let my family starve to death or like take care of them. <laughs> you know. Mm, I guess, but she cares about them even more than I don't know. Whatever. Okay. Okay, so it's that night. They're all like slurping up their medicine jerky or whatever and the door <laughs> bursts open it's the beast like literally a beast dun, 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 dun. <laughs> and the whole like Farrah like basically the whole family like hides behind the table except for Farrah who's like who's out like there throwing knives trying to grab a knife <laughs> yeah like literally she's like so ready to fight like listen I get listen you got fight flight or freeze I it's hide for me but I listen Farah is fight every time. Absolutely, <laughs> she's yeah, like literally every time. I mean, she'll fight when she needs to, but like not before the fight. Like not before not, fighting until first. after a fight. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right. She's like analyzed. Okay, can I fight right now? No. Okay, then I leave. But she always mm -hmm. considers fighting first. Mm -hmm. And it's the beast, and the beast is like, "You killed my friend." And there, the dad's like, "We didn't kill anyone. What are you talking about? Like, sorry, it must have been a mistake." And Fair was like, "No, I fucking killed him. It was me. I <laughs> no, he's him. fucking dead." <laughs> yeah, and the beast is like, "All right, well, <laughs> I'm not sorry." The treaty, the treaty that like, and Fair is like, "Wait, I didn't sign. That's very much an agreement I did not agree to. It's it's very much a work saving agreement that I did not agree to." <laughs> <laughs> I would like to be excluded this from this narrative, one which I never I asked never to be asked a part of. Part. Yeah. <laughs> and the fairy's like, or the, you know, the beast fairy is like, well, okay, you got to come back to me with me. Yeah. He's like, you, you can, well, your life is forfeit. And she's like, all right, fine. Take it to the outside at least. <laughs> the family just yeah, she's, she's like, all right. No, no, no. Listen. But it's not, it's not so that it's not even necessarily so that her family doesn't see him kill her. It's so that her family doesn't have to clean up the blood. <laughs> oh my god. She's like, oh, it makes such a mess. <laughs> oh my god. They never get the blood out of the floors. <laughs> oh my god. God for me. <laughs> and then <laughs> Yeah, so the fairy's like, um, okay, well, I could kill you, or you could just like come back and like hang out with me in mm -hmm. like Prithian, which is fairy world. And mm -hmm. everyone's like, that's 
the better option. It's like, like the phrasing is like Prithian claims your life or whatever. And she yeah. at this point still thinks that fairies can't lie. Just keep that in mind. So I guess that's why she like – Yeah, that I, I think even, it's yeah. hilarious. Yeah. Not that I even really – yeah, got that impression that she was like acting so much based yeah. on that. But like I don't know but then what – her dad is like – I don't know like, what alternative choices she could have made. Yeah, her dad's like – Right. Her dad's like, don't come back. <laughs> But yeah, it's like, and like, he's like, it's in a like, you're escape. too good for this place, you know, like, go make a better life for yourself. Not like, we hate you. Mm-hmm. Don't come back. Yeah. But, but like, still, like, he, doesn't, he doesn't even try to like go in her place or like beg it's the, the last day. thing he tells her. Is yeah. Because no, so he doesn't even like try to, yeah. There's like no, none of them will even make eye contact. None of them try to like bargain in any way go in her place we find out that when the dad no. was eating his leg beat the only reason they stopped short of killing him was because like 11 year old vera was begging like, them and like don't. shit herself and like throwing up like <laughs> right um yeah well again Ali and nesta barricaded themselves in the back room which i mean understandable <laughs> she goes <laughs> back with this monster man it turns out his name is tampon no it's <laughs> <laughs> it's tamlin um, which autocrats we call Tampon. Um, <laughs> yes. So, Tamlin, <laughs> so it turns out Tamlin is not – he's not fully in beast form. He can have like a, you know, fairy slash human form. Fairies look like humans but with pointy ears, you know, as you'd expect. Fair also thinks that fairies eat humans at this point as well. That's another one. Oh, of yeah, her, like, which is not not belief. true. Like, it's not I, not true. But it's also like – Tamlin is specifically high fae. There's fairies and then there's high fae. Yeah. But the fairies yeah. can be like many different forms. Unclear. They're really all fairies, but like you no, know, no, no. I think it's, it's the so. The fairy, the high fae are basically just humans with pointy ears. The high fae are like the Lord of the Rings mm-hmm. elves, like that. Like they're mm-hmm. just hot with pointy ears. Mm-hmm. Whereas the fairies are like the weird, like they have like weird animalistic good. features and like bark like skin, mm-hmm. like wings, and that like they're like. But some of them the literally m- just look like humans, but it's like racism. Maybe they don't live as long. I don't know what it is, but yeah, <laughs> like Alice. Like I don't know. I think she can like turn into something. Um, so he looks like a human with pointy ears, except that he has a mask that's like permanently attached to his face. And it turns yeah. out that this is the result of some like mysterious blight on the land that's like that's what's like responsible for like um things going through the wall and like attacking humans. And he tells her like, that that's why the off. wolf yeah. yeah, the wolf was across the wall to try to like scout out a cure for the blight or whatever. And everyone in his like cast everyone in the castle has like the mask attached to. It's yeah. in the spring court. There's this creator that I um I don't I for, I don't know her username but she um she like does like cosplays of like and she does a lot of like Akatar ones and whenever she does Tamlin she <laughs> she does like a mask tan tan line so like the upper <laughs> part of her face has, like, <laughs> and she does it every single time and it's hilarious <laughs> that I mean listen it's been like 50 years at this point right like. Yeah. Like, you think it was her He's ever in the spring point? court. Not, like, yeah. he's outside of the, the UV is not zero, I'll tell you that. So she goes and basically hangs out, and she meets Lucian, who's Tamlin's friend, and has, like, a fake eye and red Let hair. me just point out and that Tamlin, like, basically magic roofies Feyre on their journey to his house. Like, he knocks her he? out for two days. Oh, okay, okay. Listen, fair enough. I wouldn't be mad, honestly. Maybe she beats Alice, her servant slash friend. Um <laughs> Like cleaning her up and giving her like, and she want a dress, and she's like, "I want pants instead, so that I can run away." And Alice like finally gives her like nice pants, and Hamlin's like, "I know you just wanted pants so you could run away." Um, she's like, "The bear's like, I can't wear a dress. Like, how will anyone know I'm not like other girls if I don't wear pants?" No, no, no. she does it because she wants not to run all. away. Not but- at all. She's literally like, it's gonna be much harder to escape because her whole mind, this whole time she's like, "I have to get back to my family. Like, I can't leave them." Yeah. When, I mean, at this point, she's not wrong. Like, they will be starving. Yeah. Much, you know? But wait, when she when she sees Lucian, she sees that Lucian wears a mask too, and Lucian because he's missing one, he has like a big scar right and so mm-hmm. she's like oh so maybe like tamlin wears the mask like lucian wears the mask to cover his ugly ass scar and like tamlin wears the mask out of solidarity <laughs> <laughs> yeah so then she like you know takes a bath or whatever and she comes down for dinner and tamlin is like i'm gonna give her a compliment watch this your hair is clean <laughs> it's the best thing you can say i know i know that's like the best comment you come up with like and so like yeah, people rag on Tamlin for, like, not caring enough to, like, try really to go at it with their originally. Yeah. But, like, honestly, I think that's – like, he doesn't fake, you know? He's not – it would be – I don't know. I think it would be worse if he was, like, immediately 
just like turning on the on the old charm and like trying to yeah but he's also just like like either just totally ignoring her or like mean (laughs) like i don't know just like for a man who's who's and the thing is, it's not just his life that's affected. It's every, it's all his core. Cool, like sure, but I just mean like in the in the context of him being like a romance hero or whatever. I guess, yeah. I guess he could still be like nice to her without like really trying. He to, could like, come up with a better compliment her. than your hair is clean. Your hair is clean. <laughs> yeah. Okay. So she's like, well, "What am I supposed to do?" And he's like, "Whatever the fuck you want." Like I literally don't care. But like, you can leave if you want. But like, whatever. Um, so then I say she goes on like a ride with Lucian and she's still the whole time. She's like, no, I can't just stay here until I die. Like, God forbid. I can't I live just, in like, luxury. Yeah. Which like, but, like honestly, food. yeah, but honestly it is setting up like a lot for the next books, but like, you know, no, I get it. I get it. No, she's, I mean, she's active. Yeah. She's like spent half her life. Like the reason, the reason that Feyre is going on this ride with Lucian is because she's like, um, I'm gonna get Lucian. Mm. I'm gonna manipulate Lucian into manipulating Tamlin to let me go. Yeah, <laughs> like, she's like, I need an she's, ally she's here. Got she's not layers wrong. and layers and layers she of plans. She strategizes. <laughs> like apparently, how you're supposed to go into conversations with like a goal, like a purpose, which I don't really understand. But Farrah's good at that. <laughs> um, um, all the stable boys have horse masks. <laughs> and, like this, this applies to like other like. Like all the like fairies that work in the gardens have like bug masks. Like I was like, these poor people have like themed masks. Or Adora's like, yeah, I can't imagine having that section of my face. Like it's itching just thinking I'd tear my skin off. And I was like, yeah, listen, you're right. I mean, Wait, yeah. Is mask? Is uh, fox. Bird? It's a fox. Okay, and Tamlin's is a bird. Yeah, I think or a lot. I don't know. Yeah, sure, it's a bird. Um, but Tamlin also just like a common theme we get the first instance here but like just consistently uh, he like is constantly clenching his fists and like struggling to keep his like claws from popping out like Wolverine like all the time and I'm Mm -hmm. like boy you gotta work on that like the immediate like wish Mm -hmm. to turn into like a ravaging beast (laughs) you're not Hugh Jackman okay so like let's let's calm down yeah, no, I know. Um, so they're on this ride and they encounter this spooky, really terrifying sounding bog creature that like is like a mist and it tries to get you to look at it. And it's like, let me, it's like the basilisk. Let me eat you. It's like, yeah. me eat you, let me crush you. Yeah. And they like, they don't well, look at it. I, but you can't, you also, like, you can't acknowledge it. You can't like react. Yeah, exactly. And it reminded me of um in Avatar The Last Airbender when like, um, and goes to the spirit realm and he meets like the face stealer where like you have to maintain a completely blank expression or he'll steal your face um mm-hmm. and so like that's what i was imagining um i also want to point out so this you said that you mentioned this thing is called the bog um and listener you may think bog b-o-g that makes sense uh i would just i would like to emphasize that it's actually spelled b-o-g-g-e and that i think that my and in general, I think my enjoyment of this series was exponentially higher because I've only ever read it in audiobook. I think it's if I had possible. to see all these silly names, I would just really a bogey. Be it was like a bogey so, man. I was expecting I like a B A apostrophe A G or something, honestly. <laughs> yeah. Um, I also wanna she she's thinking of um calming thoughts when when the bog is like circling around so she like mm-hmm. you know so she doesn't react and i just would like to emphasize and a propose of nothing i would just like to emphasize that um one of the peaceful calming things is a starry night sky thank you no reason at all <laughs> 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 um so then, like later that night tampon goes tamlin goes out and <laughs> bites the bog and like you know gets rid of it and that's like oh wow like he must be really powerful how is he so such a baddie like whatever yeah. um and then that night like this monster another monster shows up and like pretends to be her dad like limping over to like try to rescue her and she almost gets tricked by it but like tamlin stops her which is yeah. nice of him the thing the thing that turned into her dad is called a puka and I just like I recognize like I, why, if not friend, why friend name? <laughs> like, like a puka shell, like a puka so cute. <laughs> I don't know. That's how she Ooh, pronounces it. I, don't think, I think it's oh, you P- just think it's a cute K-A. Name. No, but You're that it, it's, a... it's like a actual like mythological. Oh, they're cute. No, 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 no. It's a monster. But I would just oh. like would like to say like if not friend, why friend named? <laughs> 
like Puka's just an objectively it... cute name. Her name. Oh, Puka. okay. Agree Puka, to disagree. A little name. All right. What agree to you? disagree. Agree to disagree on that one. Um. Oh, uh, whatever. Um. Oh, at this point, I also would like to just call out. Um. As with Twilight, we were big Ileana Kadushin fans, and I would just like to um call for justice for Jennifer Akita who did the audiobooks for the first two books of the series and then was mm-hmm. roundly replaced by Amanda yeah. Lee Cook. And I was like, yeah. Jennifer Akita could have been Ileana Kadushin, but she was robbed. Yeah, why? And we don't like – we like her – I mean, I'm sure Jennifer Lee Cook is fine, but like I think she, she like cha- boldly changes pronunciations, I think. Yeah, Amanda yeah. Lee Cook, the, yeah, the, yeah, the one yeah, they replaced yeah. the her with. the next one, which like so bold – Oh, I'm sorry. Why? Amanda Lee Cobb. Jennifer Akita is great. Yeah. She did something else that back. we listened to, I feel like. She, yes. Yes. But Amanda Lee Cobb has also done other stuff that I've listened to. Oh, before. okay. I think I like – I can't remember. I either like really couldn't get over the difference when I got the next book or I like didn't notice and you had to like point it out to me. No, you I did. Remember, or I didn't I, notice until the pronunciations or something. No, I remember getting a stream of texts like immediately <laughs> of you being like, what the hell? Why did she change – like the pronunciation's different. Why did they get a new narrator? Like what is this? You like very likely that you brought up Ileana Kadushin like oh you know, yourself. Yeah, totally yeah, I remember like a string of like this is hard. <laughs> I, I don't – yeah. I wonder I – mean, maybe she just, like, was too busy for it or something. They are long books. You know, maybe she had something No, I get – but also, like, what a, like – how much is she kicking herself, especially with, like, how popular this oh, series is yeah. now, you know? Yeah, like You think – yeah, it's true. I mm-hmm. mean, it was popular, like, from the start. Like, I remember hearing about it when the first book came out. Like, I've been hearing about it for a while. And I very purposely was like, oh, I'm going to wait until all three books are out before I read it. Do audiobook what? narrators get like royalties the same way? Like, is it? I mean, obviously, no, but it's it more popular increase, to get more like yeah. you know visibility or whatever. Or hear I don't think no audiobook narrators yeah. usually only get paid <laughs> like, a, like a like just a lump yeah. recording fee. Yeah, I was when I first heard about the series. Like, I heard I was like, okay, I'm gonna it's gonna be a trilogy. Okay, so like I'm gonna wait until all three books are like out, so I don't have to deal with like you know cliffhangers and like that kind of stuff. And then mm-hmm. Sarah J. Moss was like, guess what? <laughs> I'm there's gonna, another. There's six books and three novellas, <laughs> and so now, like a sucker, I have to wait <laughs> for like five more books to come out, and she hasn't even started writing the next book yet. I know. Wait, how, wait, wait, wait. How many? There's are three novellas out, and no other books. No, there's one novella out. There's two no like on un- two more unnamed novellas on Goodreads, and yeah. then there's two more. books books in the like oh, regular okay. so like, there's only two more things that, are, that we're waiting for or there's only three more things that we're waiting for another four book. wait two more books two books, books and two there's only no, there's that's there's one book out i'm saying how many are out i asked you how many are out one novella and one book are out okay yeah in the second part of the series yeah, so, yeah, yeah. yeah. okay anyway so tampon comes back from killing <laughs> the bog and is like shredded up, but she's like he's relatively unscathed. If Tamlin was this powerful, I can only imagine how powerful the High Lords of Prithian must be. Because <laughs> there's like seven High Lords, or right? Yeah, there's seven courts. There's the Spring Court, which is where Feyre is. Um, there's the Summer Court, the Autumn Court, the Winter Court, the Night Court, the Day Court, and the Dawn Court. There's not suspiciously a Dusk Court. Um, so Feyre is like. She's like, well, I got to get a letter to my parent or family to like warn them about this like blight or whatever, but she can't read or write. So she tries, she's like, I'm not going to, it's too embarrassing. I'm not going to ask anyone. I'm just going to learn myself. So she like holds herself in the library and like tries to like write random words, but like doesn't, or like try to write down words she doesn't know. But Tamlin does know because when when he comes back from like hunting yeah. down the whatever, like she is like wandering around the house making a map of all the escape routes. She's, I like, know. Crying. And he comes and he looks at her map. And I guess like because she's just so bad at writing, he's like, you can't read or write, can you? And she's <laughs> like, no. <laughs> but instead of being like, I'll teach you, he's like, good thing that you're good at other things. <laughs> well then he but, but then when she makes 
the list, he offers to help her. No, no, no. I know. He does later offer to help her. But in this, like, his first instinct is not, oh, I'll teach you how to read and write. Or I'll I'll get someone to teach you how yeah. to read and write. It's, um, I do like in this scene where they, they do, like, bond over um, having to, like, uh, both having to being like unwillingly mm. taking up the mantle of like taking care yeah, of other people. Yeah, we find out he like really didn't even want to be the high. He's like mad about having the title. He, like, yeah, he was like the youngest son. The only reason he became the high lord yeah. is because well, we didn't. We don't, she doesn't even know he's a high lord at this point. But yeah, she is, she's like about to find out. Sure, sure. I'm just saying, like, yeah, whatever. Yeah. Um, and it's just funny when she finds out. Yeah, and she's like, I just think there's like a bunch of like very twilighty. She's like, it's one thing to talk oh. to him as if he wasn't a predator made to kill and destroy. Like, oh, I don't know 100%. something about that. It's like, oh, I can kill you. Yeah. <laughs> at one time, at, at one point, no, I mean, I'll talk about it later. Yeah, there's a bunch of like little twilight things. I was like, Sarah J. Mouse was heavily influenced. Yeah. You cannot convince me otherwise. No. I mean, Twilight's really the template. Twilight's the template that this book is based mm-hmm. on. Like that, this and like, and, so like all many. the like modern yeah. romantic fantasies that are like mm-hmm. coming out. Like Twilight's really and the seven days for in them. June. Her like vamp, yeah. Well, okay, um, that's speaking of romantic week. fantasy. <laughs> it's not yeah, a fantasy books, series. No, no, the books that she's right that she writes. Oh, oh, yeah, 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 oh, yeah. Okay, so then we find out about this thing called the serial, which is like, which like I don't really understand because fair is like she still thinks fairies can't lie. And like so the chat, you trot the serial yeah. and you get answers to your questions. But then she's like, I don't know. I was just confused when she finds out the fairies can lie. She's like, well, is this the serial tell me the truth? But like, what would be the I point think the serial like, like has to like has to answer your questions, whereas like the other fairies don't oh, could have just to not answer. answer. Yeah, sure. They could like tell half truth or whatever. Yeah. So Lucian like tells her quote unquote how to find and catch it. And he's like, it's super dramatic. He's like, you gotta get some chicken blood and like the full moon. Not not actually, but like and like no, you know, yeah. Trap it like with a rope, and like then it'll get answers. Yeah. And <laughs> she does that, and it turns out like Alice tells her later, she's like, yeah, don't fucking do that next time. All you had to do was like offer it a new coat, and it would have been like growling at your feet. <laughs> like, don't. There's just such an Damn. asshole move on Lucian's part. Yeah. And this oh, no, yeah, like, is Lucian's dangerous. just like, Lucian is both like justifiably a jerk because she did kill his good friend, mm-hmm. but also like, I was like, can you like simmer down, Lucian? Like, you just like, I need you to stop. <laughs> mm-hmm. God. So she talks to the serial. Uh, the serial tells her, like, this is how she finds out that uh, Hamlet is the High Lord. And the serial is like, mm-hmm. stay with the High Lord, human. He will shield you. From bitch, him, from her. So stay close to him, and all will be righted. Yeah, yeah. There's this mysterious her that keeps being mentioned. Yeah, like, that she. And that's like, like this. Per- like, yeah, she mm-hmm. is like evil or whatever. And like, fair mm-hmm. is like, uh, fair is initially like, oh, is she like the high lady? Which, she has that thought a bunch of times. She's like, maybe it's yeah. a lady, not a high lord, like here. Yeah. Yeah. So like keep that in mind. Yeah. Then the serial gives her like an unnecessary background of like the war or whatever. And mm-hmm. the serial is about to tell her about like the blight, you know, that's like affecting magic and has been like mm-hmm. is causing the masks and everything. But then they mm-hmm. get interrupted by the by Naga. The Naga, which are like mean fairies. And they're like, hmm, we served this queen. People. Come to they slurp. do eat people. <laughs> yeah. And possibly, yeah. And she like fights them, but she manages to like the serial is like help me, help me, and she manages like free she uses me for a shot to free the serial. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So that's like, so now nice the fr- serial and her are, like BFFs. Like the serial mm-hmm. is like the gossip girl of Prithian, and they just mm-hmm. like show up. And like anytime Feyre needs like the four one one, the serial yeah. shows up. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> um, <laughs> and yeah, so then like she kills like some of the Naga, but like they're about to finish her when like Tamlin shows <laughs> up and. Save she like has this thought where she's like she's basically like I'm not going like they're definitely gonna kill kill me but I'm not gonna go down without a fight and then immediately after that line they like take her bow and like snap it in half and then, I like, know. throw her to the ground. <laughs> I just like the <laughs> juxtaposition of her being like I'm scrappy I'm gonna take them down like I'm taking as many of them down with me yeah. and then like immediately no <laughs> she's out like well as many of them as you can turns out to be zero well she does kill like no one. no she did kill one yeah. she did kill yeah, one yeah, yeah. <laughs> Out of four. Yeah. Um, okay. So then like she talks to Alice and I don't know. The main takeaway, Alice has like these nephews. Oh, wait. Tamlin and- sa- appears to save her. 
That's what I said. Mr. From the Cameron Naga. And saves the day. Yeah, yeah. Oh, I didn't hear you. We don't have to talk about Alice. But I, I just would like to say that he does um, disembowel one of the Naga, which Absolutely. was just he very does with his like his for me. They finally with his come out. His quasi come in useful. And yeah, so Farah is like asking everybody about like the blight, and like she's like the serial told me all this shit, like whatever like can you like i want to know what's going on and everyone keeps being like farah you don't need to know what's going on and fair is like the hell i don't like i have to live in fairy world for the rest of my life like why aren't you fucking telling me like there are bad things happening i want to know why <laughs> and then farah finally figures out that fairies can lie <laughs> and right, she's like right. are you kidding me <laughs> I know. She's like really she's really embarrassed. It's just funny. They're like, yeah, yeah like, I mean it is you? embarrassing. Well, yeah, of course we can fucking lie. Um and then she also finds out like Tamlin tells her that he was like a kid during the war, which was like five hundred years ago, right? She's like, Why wow, you're really fucking old? Because this is like, when she finds <laughs> out that some fairies like helped the humans. It wasn't just the humans against fairies. Because Tamlin's like, Yeah, how the fuck do you think they ever got to the point of like getting a treaty? Like you really think that they like they were out here with like arrows and we're fucking fairies. Like we have what? We have magic. Listen. <laughs> They don't even have guns. Listen, this is the 18th. Like, I don't know what's – like, you know, like – There's no guns, germs, or yeah. steel. Uh, listen. <laughs> Just blight. Uh, <laughs> and ash arrows. Oh, and, and iron, I guess. Um, yeah. And she's like, oh, did you did you help the humans? He's like, no, I was a kid. But, like, I totally would have. Like, I totally would have. Yeah, I and definitely would have. Meanwhile, like, we find out a little bit later that, like, his dad and brothers absolutely would, did not. Like, old, older brothers. Like, they had slaves. and like, They were, were anti-human. Like, yeah, they, like, were, like, they were pro-human slave. For, so, I'm like, that's really bold out here. You're, you're the kid in, like, you know, social studies class being, like, absolutely, I would have, like – I don't know. Like, I don't want to. Like I know I what you're. I would know what like, you're Yeah, like I don't know. It's just yeah, I'm not just. I would have been leading I mean, the resistance, and it's like no, yeah. bitch. You would have like right, been hiding right, in the right, house. Right, 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 right. Like me, yeah, exactly. Listen, listen. I can be honest with myself. Like I know that if I were like in most of those situations, like I, I would just be like cowering or would run away. Like I know myself. Like I, and I am, I am willing to admit that about myself. Yeah. Like, I wouldn't actively do harm, but I, would like, wouldn't go out of my way. <laughs> you wouldn't be out there, like, punching people in the no. street. I don't know. Listen. I don't know. I don't know. I mean, I, I guess you, you um, never know until Farrah, you're in the situation. Like, Farrah is like, oh, wow. Like, see, I would have just, like, picked whichever side kept my family safe. And I never thought of that <laughs> as a weakness until now. I'm like, right. Um, <laughs> I mean, she's scrappy. And this is when we find out that – because she's like she's still like really worried about her family she's like yeah like you they're fucking gonna starve and tamlin's like well i'm not that much of an asshole like don't worry they think think (laughs) i glamored their memories like alter their memories to make them think that you got called away to help a wealthy aunt and like i also gave them back their wealth basically like their living luxury yeah um and i did that to stop your dad from coming after you like i didn't want him to like break the treaty even more and she's like lol he wouldn't have come yeah and yeah fair is like they wouldn't have given a fuck either way and she's also like she constantly is having this like thought where she's like she like one of her things is like she wants to be remembered like she wants to be like relevant mm. and she's like well, nobody I mean, like my family doesn't care about me which is no not you're saying it in a way of like oh like i don't want to i want to go no. down in history no it's literally no, just like no, normal no, no. like wow my family literally didn't care about me enough to like right. even ask for me to not be taken much right. less remember that i existed ever well, you know, yeah, that's what I was saying. I wasn't saying yeah. that in a bad way, but like she wants to be like she wants people it's not to a big like ask. hold it's her like very in that. Right. She wants people to care enough about her wanting, yeah. to remember her. Which, like, I, I can't <laughs> imagine like, who doesn't. wouldn't want that. Yeah. Um, yeah. And then she finally realizes she's like, I guess my vow is like, you know, we're good. I guess it's – listen. And that only like stays in her little brain for a little bit. Like she's almost immediately yeah. back on her bullshit. But like – for that moment, yeah. she's like, "Wow, I guess, I guess we're, good. I guess I can just like r- take a breath and relax." She's like, "I like," and that's when she gets it—the nerve to like ask for paints and brushes. And Tamlin's like, yeah. "Do you like to paint?" It's like, "Absolutely." He's so flustered. He's so absolutely. Cute. I do. I have absolutely. my gallery. Yeah, like I'll get it for you. He's like, "Well, not tomorrow. It needs to be clean." So I'll show, I'll show it to you. Listen, ne- the next day, the next day, I'll show it to you. Yeah, he shows it to her. But Tamlin overall is just like so bad at flirting. At one point, we do get an almost cheek touch, like Edward Cullen. Like at one point, Tamlin does <laughs> almost go like down her cheek and then like run away. But not quite there. But I was like, uh, any boy, it's you. Yeah. Wait, what was I going to say? Oh, yeah. And at one point when Fair is like in the library trying to teach herself how to read, and you know, her short-lived attempt to try to teach herself how to read and write, um, she sees a map of Prithian. So she sees like all the courts and she sees that there is a big barren mountain in the middle. 
So file that away for later. And also that the night court, appropriate of nothing, is the biggest one and is far north. Mm. Is it really the biggest? Interesting. Yeah, it's like the most land. Oh, yeah. That makes sense, I guess. Okay. Because like, okay. No, yeah. Um, so then that night, there's like this traumatic scene with like poor little blue fairy guy who apparently was like oh dumped over the border with his wings. His wings are chopped. Oh my and God, yeah. Basically- Oh, it's really I don't uh I don't like it. And like basically Tamlin has like healing magic, but like he can't use it to its place full like power anymore. Like yeah. he has the blight ostensibly. And so basically Farah just like talks the fairy. She's like, it's gonna be okay. Yeah. Like it's gonna be okay, you'll get your wings back. The fairy's like, I want my wings off. She cut my wings yeah. off. She cut my wings off. Yeah, the and mysterious then the fairy dies. She... And Lucian like throws up. Fair like is the only one yeah. who Tamlin also like Tamlin does like the the fairy death prayer and it's it's basically just Christian like it's just Christianity <laughs> like yeah, it's, it's just the Christian but like with fairy words instead mm-hmm. of like God and Jesus mm-hmm. and there's a lot of things like especially in later books that like are really heavily influenced by like Judaism like there's a lot of like fairy lore that is just like the Torah. <laughs> remember and i just like i don't know what sarah Ross was going for but like she was heavily influenced by that obviously mm-hmm. um also i want to say like this scene is really cute i like th- i think this like really sort of shows like Feyre's like goodness in a way that like we haven't really seen before because before mm-hmm. it was kind of more just about survival mm-hmm. um but she does have a thought when they're when she's holding the dying fairy's hand and she is like oh, oh, i know i'll never be able to paint his skin <laughs> I know. Oh my god. Like, like, girl, it's not the time. I know. It's not the but time. also makes me like yeah, I don't know. It's like she is constantly it. like, Oh, I want to paint that. Like she, like, you know, not yeah. that she has paints. <laughs> and she says sorry to Tamlin about the wolf for the first time. She's like, sorry about killing your friend. Like Yeah. He's like, Wow, you really care a lot about this fairy. I thought you hated fairies. And she's like, No, I'm sorry about that. She's like, I'm not an asshole. <laughs> like Yeah. <laughs> and then Tamlin like buries the fairy by himself and won't let her help. And then he takes her on a horseback riding date, but Lucian also comes. Look, and like they go with and Lucian and Tamlin, they yeah. go hang out in the meadow. And I was just like, it's like it's giving like it Edward really and Bella is. in the meadow, really and like is. Jacob is there too. <laughs> it's just mm-hmm. so weird. Mm-hmm. But not Jacob. He's not Jacob. It's more like, like Seth um, Clearwater, like Seth Clearwater, or like Ben. Like you know how in the not like yeah, girls, like yeah, like yeah, yeah. Listen. Just like, hey, guys. <laughs> I don't know. It's so funny because, like, yeah, they set up like a little picnic blanket and then, like, she sits down and then she's like – and they're whispering behind me for, like, who should sit next to me. <laughs> like, and it's – you definitely know – like, it's definitely, like, Lucian be like, hey, man, go sit next to her. And Tamlin's like, no, I don't want to. You go do it. And she's like, fucking sit, sit your ass down. Sit down. Yeah. Go sit next to her. Do it now. Listen. Look at me. Look at me in my eyes. What is the point of this whole shit? Why did Lucian- our friend – Wolfie friend man die? <laughs> like Lucian listen, constantly matchmaking, like fair. Di- he's like, oh my god, he's like, just, like I keeping them on task. everything. Yeah, yeah, he's the only one who like has his eye on the prize here. <sighs> anyway, yeah, he he like specifically tells Tamlin at one point. Yeah. He's like, you need to stop brooding and get your shit together. Mm-hmm. Like he says, Tamlin, brooding. <laughs> yeah, Tamlin like finally sits down. And is like, oh, do you like it? You like it? Good he takes her over there. to like a pool like a little uh-huh. pond filled with starlight like that's yeah, what it is like it's cool. it's cool Don't and Farrah's like oh like it's so pretty and then she looks over and like K- Tamlin's just taking his clothes off like mm-hmm. she's like what do you sir he's like take your clothes <laughs> off let's go swimming <laughs> she's at? like it's no like that. It's like that. <laughs> where your clothes at yeah but she is like, oh yeah, but I do like I I do know how to swim because I watched the other neighborhood children <laughs> swimming, and then I taught myself like just like hunting. And I was like, listen, I was willing to believe that you learned how to hunt by like watching other people do it, but I don't think swimming is something that you could just like watch so a video about and then like jump in. <laughs> yeah, I don't think so either. But I really don't remember how I like actually learned how to swim, like. We did swimming lessons. No, I know, but I don't remember like the feeling, right? Like how I can't remember learning how to write. Like I know I was, I know I went to writing right. lessons in school, you know, but like, right. I don't remember like actually there being a moment when I'm like, wow, I'm gonna sink. So I don't know. I right. I, I, I agree though. It doesn't seem like the kind of thing that. I mean, you must be able to learn by yourself. Like I don't think you need someone there like holding sure. you up. But I think, it, but especially how. because she wasn't a kid, you know, like she. This was after they became poor that she like taught herself how to swim. 
she was, she was, it was like, like the village. Children. I don't know if that matters. I don't think it's necessarily. Well, I'm just thinking of like you know how like babies have yeah, like but that's the just holding their breath to like hold their breath. Yeah, but that's not the same. This swimming. I don't know. It's maybe it's just the same. I don't know. I maybe I'm just like applying the like how with languages like it's easier to learn languages when you're like also, really young. I don't. I now that we just said that, I feel like that's always said as something that's like so crazy, like babies knowing to hold their breath, but like. Like, I know humans are bad at – like, I know human babies are, like, really bad at survival or whatever, but, like, <laughs> I would totally – why would you expect a living thing to, like, take a breath of something that's not what it's supposed to yeah. breathe? Like, that seems like a ve- – like, wow, they know to hold their <laughs> breath. They know to not breathe in liquid. Like – Oh, okay. Can I tell you something that I learned recently about babies and liquid that I hate and that I now need to, like, pass babies this message can't on? can't have water. No. Um, so when you're in the womb, um, you're um babies fluid. pee in the womb. Oh, yeah. 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 And they you're like they, they're just floating around. Yeah. In the pee. Mm-hmm. Horrible. What the fuck? Why? To give your kidneys time to learn how to work. But why isn't it like sucked out through their umbilical cord? Why do you have to pee it out? Into the, into the amniotic sac? <laughs> what are you doing? Mm-hmm. Why are we swimming around in our own pee? <laughs> I don't know. We don't poop at the very least. I did I did confirm that babies do not poop in the womb, but well, they do yeah. pee. And you yeah. want to know how I learned this? Because I was like scrolling through reels and a video popped up of someone having an ultrasound where their baby like yeah. peed during the ultrasound. That's and I was funny. like, this is horrible. That's <laughs> I hate everything about this. <laughs> um, <laughs> yeah. So – Tam, she found Tamlin's like, oh, when'd your dad lose his money? And she's like, how'd you know we used to be rich? He's like, peasants don't talk the way you do or whatever. <laughs> and they like talk about that. And then he tells her about like Lucian's backstory and how like Lucian's from the autumn court and has like yeah. seven brothers and he's like the youngest. And they all tried to kill him because apparently like the person who gets to be the high lord isn't the oldest. It's whoever's like the strongest or whatever. And they were like, you mm-hmm. know, let's get rid of the, you know, any possible competition. And then like Tamlin saved him. And now but they also here. killed his girlfriend. His dad killed his girlfriend, yeah, but then yeah, like, yeah. picked him out. Mm-hmm. And like, she wasn't good enough. Like, oh, it's it's Lucian it's hunting open season. season. Now. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, and then he like killed one of them, and Tamlin killed the other two. Or they, so this is when we first learn about the mating bond. That like the mating bond is a thing for fairies, where like it's essentially just like soulmates. Like mm-hmm. you like, and it's like I I'm very confused about like the mating bond because like. Because Tamlin, when he's describing Lucian and his girlfriend, Lucian, and he's like, yeah, Lucian just, like, was assuming that, like, you know, the mating bond hadn't snapped into place yet, but, like, it would. Mm -hmm. And, like, I just, like, the way the mating bond is described elsewhere, like, it seems like it doesn't make sense. Like, why doesn't it immediately snap into place? Like, the fact that so many people are like, oh, I'm just waiting for it to snap into place. And I'm like, Mm -hmm. okay, but, like, if you're in a committed relationship with someone, like, what what would be the reason that it wouldn't? (laughs) If it's yeah. gonna happen, you know, right. I just like, I don't. I don't I do. Especially because it. we know right. that sometimes it happens when you're not even a committed really like right. It's... Well, you have to like accept it. Like it's not like I know, but you still feel it. You know what I mean? Like you, you kind of know, Fair, you have a no. sense that it's there. Fair it doesn't. Anyway, yeah, I know. That's what I'm no, saying. It doesn't make sense. <laughs> no, I'm saying Farah doesn't feel it right now. Yeah, I'm saying it doesn't. She could. Yeah, none of it makes sense. And it's like supposed to be, you know, it's the classic, like it's supposed to be rare, but like the same way the imprinting is supposed to be rare in Twilight and then like everyone and their mo- mother, everyone and their brother, I guess more appropriately, <laughs> is out here like imprinting on babies yeah. and shit. <laughs> um, and so now she's back to being like mad that she can't see her family. Yeah. Which like, listen, and Tamlin's like, it's not silly. But she is like, she is like happy now and she's like very cute and she's like making jokes mm. and like. You can see her very yeah. much like finally getting to like have a personality that's like right. her own and like that's not just dedicated yeah. to like taking care of other people. And it's mm-hmm. just like very sweet. And like I don't think um, – I mean I don't think this is a spoiler, but I – like I just want to – like I really don't think we get the rest of the series, Feyre, in the rest of the series if we don't have Feyre at the spring court. Like if she doesn't do this like healing mm-hmm. at the spring court that she's doing right now. I don't mm-hmm. think the rest of the series happens. Yeah, it's kind of like a progression. Like, she needs to eventually move the, like, 
Yeah, I yeah. agree. Because we get this kind of like nice little like montage. She's like, yeah, yeah I, like the, I hang out with the High Lord. I'm happy to talk to him. We're spending hours in comfortable silence. And like she – he's like following her at one point. She sets a trap and then he like reads her this poem <laughs> that he made with like the list of like random <laughs> words. <laughs> it's – yeah, it's cute. And like – And I was like, that's that's cute. But also like that's this is the worst uh, poem I've ever heard in my okay. entire <laughs> He also at one point sucks her blood. Hurting herself with a rose. Like she picks a rose and is like cutting herself with it, basically like squeezing it, squeezing the thorns. Yeah. And he like he, and he heals it. He doesn't suck it, he heals it. Like yeah, he, but he puts it to his magic. mouth. Yeah. He puts it to his mouth to heal it. Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Sure. But it has blood on it because it's like touching it. Yeah. Yeah. I'm just saying she's turned on by it. And I was like, you Farah, you freak. <laughs> this is when we find out about the I think his backstory. And Tamlin's like, I'm only – yeah, he's like, I learned how to write poems when I was, like, with the war bands. And, like, that's how I got so good at it. And that's a brag. But that's why I'm so – you know, we had okay. the competitions where who would write the best love poem, which, like, and what it was a me. weird thing. I don't believe that. But, like, listen, I love it. And he's like, yeah, I'm only good at fighting, not ruling. Like – Two things that we learn about Tamlin um, in order of importance. One, that he plays a, quote, mean fiddle. And two, <laughs> that um, he has a, quote, heart of stone. Vera overhears people telling him this multiple times, that he has a oh, heart really? of stone. Yes. I don't remember. I was going to say we find out that his family was killed by an enemy high lord. That's kind oh, of important. Well, that too. Yeah, no, that's yeah. what I was going to say. No, but the heart of stone thing, remember that. That is something that's oh, now been I mentioned twice. Didn't remember that. By this enough. point. Listen. But more importantly, he can play a mean fiddle. Yeah. <laughs> more importantly. But sons of high lords can't be roving minstrels. They can't. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Honestly, like, honestly, that, that should have been. This is what I want from Tedlin's character. Like, I know. Roaming like, minstrel uh, Prithian. Yeah. <laughs> Singing his bad little poems, but like having yeah. the time of his life while doing it. <laughs> Being hyped up by the townsfolk. Absolutely. Aww, this is really, that's Tamlin's character arc that I want. Yeah. <laughs> the, the, what is it? The troubadour? Is that what it's called? Yeah, the, yeah, like, yeah. Or yeah. like uh, there's a bunch of – yeah, the troubadour, the – um, the fool, maybe, but like that's kind of like an option. Yeah, because you know? the fool's more like more overall, more like, like one uh, core, like, like not really traveling. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Okay, so now it's Colin my Cal Colin my, which autocorrects to calamari in my phone. Mine was Callan Cullen my, like the Cullens, which is bonfire night, and we find out that humans don't celebrate holidays at all anymore in this world because they're like so much like fuck the fairies and like for some reason the fairies get the holidays. It's not bonfire night. It's Beltane. That's they the equivalent. It, sure. I'm saying Tamlin calls it bon. I'm not saying it's British bonfire oh. night. I'm saying Oh, Tamlin that's what I thought. Bun. I was like, no, no, that's completely opposite times of year, Rachel. No. No, I'm saying that's how it's described in the book. Yeah. I don't know what actual holiday it is. It's be- it's supposed to be Beltane. That's what it is, which is like the start of spring in like Celtic mythology. Fair enough. And Feyre is like – Tamlin's like, yeah, like it's it's very like fairy, like you wouldn't get it, but just like stay inside tonight. Don't come outside, don't come outside. She's like, I'm not he's invited like, to your, your ceremony. Room. And he's like, No, you're not. And it's giving Bella being like, Can I watch you hunt? Like, I don't know. That's what I'm no. Like, no, no, this is, mm. it feels very tired. But anyway, Fair is like, um, I'm not missing out on the party because like I hear the music, like I've seen people bringing out like delicious food, like fuck this, like I'm going. Before that, Tamlin tells her about the party, and then like she overhears a conversation. I forget what the contact – like, she's he knows she's there, but, like, Lucian shows up, and they have this conversation with this, like, invisible monster thing that sounds, like, mm-hmm. really, really scary. And it's all about, like, like the mysterious she, again, being, like, yeah. why are you so – like, watch out, whatever. And Farrah's, like, wow, it's, like, so scary. And then she, like, goes home and draws – even though she can't see yeah. it, she goes home and draws, like, the scary – No, no, she can see it when it flies away eventually. Oh. Like, oh, as really? soon as okay, – and it's, okay. it's, it's called the Ator. The yeah. Ator. Yeah. The Ator. Ator. Yeah. A-T-T-O-R. And just, yeah, she keeps thinking like high lady perhaps instead of high lord. Um I which I didn't I didn't remember how much that pops up. Yeah, and I was like, like why not? Like I should shadowing. Be, kind of. So yeah, yeah. Sort of. And Lucian's like really bad. He's like, What did you hear? What did you hear? And like, whatever, it's fine. Yeah. So yeah, okay, yeah. so then she goes out to the bonfire. She's like, fuck this, I'm going to the bonfire. And she's like, Wow, this is this is nice. This is nice. I love what you've done with the place. <laughs> this is great. And immediately Gets us attacked, not really attacked, but like three you know, fairies assaulted. try to sexually assault her. Um, yeah, but then, then, well, they're not high, yeah, fair, yeah, but then, then, we hear a quote deep sensual male voice from a quote most beautiful man I have ever seen saying 
There you are. I've been looking for you. <laughs> and it's Sexy Man. We don't know his name yet. But Sexy mm-hmm. Man with purple eyes, with violet eyes, which was giving mm-hmm. me very like old school romance, how all the heroines had like violet eyes. Oh, the violet eyed heroine. It's except hero. it's like the guy. <laughs> He's violet eyes. He has purple eyes. Anyway, like they have a little chat and she's like, wow, he was really hot and mysterious. But like, I'm going to go now. And then Lucian appears and he's like, what the fuck are you doing here? And he picks her up, quote, like a sack of potatoes and then runs her back to the house. And it was it was getting very Edward and Bella there, Um, Mm -hmm. like definite Twilight vibes. And basically Lucian Mm -hmm. is like, listen, Tamlin has to fuck someone tonight. In order to release the yearly <laughs> magic, which is hilarious. Just side note, like the fact that they have to fuck. But the implication, I was looking up like fan theories of this about whether like the uh, all the other courts do it. Because it's specifically said that all the courts do the great right, which is like the releasing of magic. But there is there's debate about whether like all of them do calumni specifically where you have to like fuck someone or whether they're just like normal and they don't do that and it seems like it's just the spring court <laughs> that does the fucking thing yeah like, oh absolutely freaks. so yeah lucia's basically like listen tamlin is like gonna fuck someone tonight and it's gonna be really freaky and like you if he smells you he's gonna want to fuck you and he will Mm -hmm. assault you if like he will do it against your will because he won't be able to control himself he'll be like so feral and fair on one hand is like i like that some feral part of him wanted me but also it's like like i (laughs) the whole message is like oh he just can't control himself he's like giving himself over to his instincts (laughs) it's like not great not great i'm like yeah. Vera, it's a big old red flag right there <laughs> big old red flag but yeah so fairy did leave her room and then she's like bopping around and then tamlin comes back it's like 2 a.m and he like you know has hickeys and shit like he's fucked someone else and she's mm-hmm. like Meh, he's fucked someone else and he's like mer it's so unfair i had to have sex with someone else yeah he's like i Meh. smelled you and i couldn't find you and then he yeah. like um uh, he like yeah he like puts his claws in the wallop of her head like he like cages her in and then like gives her a big old hickey um and then he's like you should have listened to me like stay in your room in the future and then there's <laughs> just she slaps him and she's like don't tell me what to do yeah <laughs> like, and she's like i'm it. so turned on yeah we get the lips and teeth and tongue well, she yeah. punches and I was him. like, this is a little hot. Yeah, yeah, I was like, listen, this yes. this whole interaction, huge listen. red flag, but I'm also turned on. You know? Yeah. Like I was like, yeah. this is this is a little hot. This, I can admit. I'll admit it. I'm aroused. I'll admit mm-hmm. it. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so then they're in a fight and then they come down and um Thera finally wears a dress. <laughs> she wears a beautiful golden dress that Alice puts her in. And I was like, this is once again Sarah J. Mouse is fully committing to the beauty and the beast bit like down to like having bell coming down in a beautiful gold dress <laughs> to, like see the beast um and like that's the turning point in their relationship but yeah she like comes down and she's like hello and tamlin got her roses and they like make up and now they're just like growing closer and then Feyre shows him her paintings and she's showing him all these paintings, um, and one of them is, like, of her fucking <laughs> Isaac <laughs> in the village. Or it's, like, specifically, like, their hands in the hay. <laughs> and, like, mm-hmm. I was like, damn, but, like, why? <laughs> That's so much. But okay. Uh, but, Tam- yeah, Tamlin was like, wow, you're such a good artist. Oh, my God. And then Vera's like, what can I do to help you? And Tamlin is like, you can't do anything. And I'm like. Bitch, you lying. Why the fuck you lying? Mm-hmm. Well, because he has to. I know, but... Whatever. And then they're, like, what? about to have kissy-kissy time. But then, like, mm-hmm. Tamlin kind of low-key roofies her again. Like, he not like she, like, falls asleep randomly. Oh, it, and it seemed no. like it just kind of came out of nowhere and she just, like, wakes up in her room. It's not... I don't know. No, she, like, goes... Yeah, I'm not sure. I wasn't clear on that. Hmm. Oh, they're like it. He like reveals his true nature at some point. Like he's been wearing a glamour the whole time. So he like shows her what he really looks like. And it's basically just like hotter and more spring like than before. Um, But she wakes up in bed the next day and she sees that everybody has um, removed their 
like she sees everybody as they are and like she sees because alice is in the room and she has like wood bark skin she's like who the fuck are you and alice is like what bitch like it's me mm-hmm. and then they realize that tamlin has like removed the glamour off of everybody so now she can see all these fairies including like a lot of fairies that were invisible and she's like so when i was like following the puka out and my dad and i was like i thought i was being sneaky like there was just hundreds mm-hmm. of people watching me Tamlin was like, yep, uh, sorry about that. So th- then we get, yoikes, next day, there's a severed head in the garden. Ah, And Lucian and Tamlin, Lucian and Tamlin are like, ah, oh, like it's, it's not like, Fair's like, oh my God, is this a message from the mysterious, like her, from the mysterious she, like, Tamlin, and then Tamlin and Lucian are like, no, like this is like, this is probably from the night court. Like this is something the high Lord of the night court would find like amusing. Like he definitely just like did this to like fuck with us for fun. Like it, blah. so like have that set up and that's, that's all listener. That's a, that's a wrap for this episode mm-hmm. on Akatar listener. Where, yeah. Tune in next week <laughs> for part two. Allison, where can they find us? Uh, Wow, you were so eager to say that. Like, you couldn't uh-huh. even let me Listen, say Listen, because that, like, you always try to beat me to <laughs> that it. That was the end of today's episode. Yeah. Well, sometimes I, like, wait, and you, like, take so long to realize that you're supposed to say it. Um, oh, yeah, but listen, I just, we just want to emphasize, like, part two will be coming next week. It's not going to be, like, the week after. Like, Bridgerton, the next Bridgerton will be coming, will be pushed back a week so that you can get like part one and part two one right after another anyway mm-hmm. you can talk about part one um on our social media pages at we read it one night on facebook tiktok and instagram at we read it podcast on twitter and you can also check out our etsy store with some feminist cat loving kinky merch and you can check out our red bubble store with some we read it white one night themed merch and you can also leave us a five star review wherever you're listening and you can also leave us a review with words we like receiving those we just got one on apple Podcasts, and it was very nice really really made my day so um go forth yeah, and uh that was nice and do that five star review only please <laughs> <laughs> except except we we did get one one star review that was funny <laughs> sometimes i like read it have a little chuckle yeah yeah <laughs> um, won't say any more about that but it's public so whatever okay all right godspeed comrades comrades godspeed, godspeed.